Amen, amen. Y'all come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in the house, come on in the house. Amen, come on in the house, come on in, come on in. Glory be to God. Come on in tonight. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in tonight. Put those hands together as y'all come in tonight. Amen. Put your hands together on tonight. Glory be to God. We bless God tonight. Amen. We thank God, amen, for all his wonderful doing on tonight. Glory be to God. Mama, 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 mama. Go back up. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus on tonight. Amen. Come on in tonight. Keep those hands clapping on tonight. Keep those hands clapping on tonight. Amen. Lessons. Thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. You have just stepped into the prayer room. Amen. I am Pastor Fulmore. Amen. Glory to God. And this is Temple Live tonight. Amen. We're into our Amen. marriage slash single segment. Amen. And we're sitting here tonight. Amen. With our special guest tonight. Amen. A, a man of God and a woman of God. I am going to allow them to introduce themselves. Amen. I can say some things. Amen. But I would like for them to be able to begin to um, introduce themselves on tonight. Amen. Glory be to God. Um, preacher, go ahead and tell the people who you are tonight. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you all. He bless God for you. God Pastor. bless you. To your lovely wife. Bless God for her. Amen. Amen. We honor you all tonight. Thank you all so much for having us. i uh, join you all tonight. Temple Live on this um, session. We bless God for being here. We are the Blandings. Um, my husband is Elder Blanding. I'm Minister Tanika Blanding. Tanika Blanding. And we just bless God for being here um, to be able to share with you all tonight. Amen. Hello. Amen. Didn't that she said? We bless God tonight. Amen. Glory to God. When you come on in, amen, please immediately go ahead and share this broadcast on tonight. Amen. Um, what we're going to ask is, is that... Um, Minister, we're going to ask that you lead us out in prayer. Um, Minister um, Blandon, ask you to lead us out in prayer. And then we're going to ask um, my wife, Elder Fulmore, to um, give us a scripture for tonight. Amen. That order, if y'all don't mind. Okay. Let us pray. God, we thank you for allowing us this time to fellowship with each other. We thank you for allowing us uh, this time to be on the airwaves to encourage someone. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for leading and guiding each and every one of us into all truth. God, we ask even now that your anointing would arrest the airwaves, that whatever is said on this podcast is received in love. We pray that any ill intentions and any ill will be pushed back right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray that everything that goes forth from here does it to the intent that you would have it to do, that some might, someone might be enlightened, someone might be delivered, someone might be healed, someone might be fixed, brokennesses will be torn down, and we pray that marriages would be healed and that relationships would be restored, and we ask that love is spread throughout every single one that listens to these words on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, amen. 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 Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. Y'all camera, y'all camera is covering y'all faces. Can y'all push y'all camera up a little bit? 
And our okay. camera's doing the same thing. Yeah, we want to make sure we get a good picture of you guys tonight. You got us? Yes, yeah, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. That's the full more. Can you see our face? Yeah, see right here. Sir. Can you see our face? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. It's a whole lot. Yes, sir. It's a whole lot better. All can right. you push it up a little bit? I can't even, you got a hat on, don't you? Yeah, I got a hat on. You got your, you got your cap on? Yeah. <laughs> you see it? Okay, then can you push it up a little teeny bit? Put the head up a little bit. Oh. Just a little bit. No, 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 no. Can you put the camera up, son? So oh, we can oh. see your whole oh. All right, hold on. Just a little bit. A little bit. Because y'all have to be cut off. Okay. Thank you. No problem. No problem. We want the, we want the best shot tonight. What about now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's good. That's good. We're awesome, man. Thank y'all so much. We love y'all. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Y'all know we family. Fix it one more time. Amen. You bless God. All right, are we good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. At this time, we're going to go ahead and get our scripture reading. Amen. I'm going to read you here in Psalm 127, verses number 22. And it reads Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who builds it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, and to eat the bread of sorrow. For well, so he gives his beloved. I pray you hear it. Psalm 127, verse number 22. Word of God for the Amen. <clears throat> we thank God. Glory to God. That's the full more God. Uh, Amen. We thank God once again for you all. I'm sorry, Elder, what you say? I just wanted to ask some of the Till Death Do Us Part audiences to share this. Go ahead and share this, guys. Those of you who are watching, um, please share this so that uh, everyone can tune in. Um, Amen. Share the page. Thank you. Amen. Um, Psalm 127, verse number 22. Um, talk to us. Um, I, want, I, want to, I want to start this off. I want to go, I want to go into foundation. Um, but talk to us how did you guys get started with um, the talk show? Let's, let's, let's start off there for a minute. I want the people to know what you do and the reason why God has allowed us to connect on tonight. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's, that's really a strange story. God works in mysterious ways and you know it's his will when you didn't plan it, but somehow it just happens, right? So it really started okay. off as a podcast that a real close friend of mine, we used to run the streets together and we both actually uh, okay. are living for God now and we're ministering. And uh, he and I started out with doing a um, podcast in which we wanted to, you know, uh, speak about Christ and try to bring people, you know, to the knowledge of Christ and uh, just kind of expound on scriptures and break stereotypes and tradition and myths that people add on to what it, truly means to be a disciple so um god was moving in our lives so quickly until when we actually launched the show he started getting pulled in other directions and god started opening other doors for him and uh yes, and schedules clashed so one night uh i had my wife substitute for him and when she substituted for him the show took on a whole new life and the audience responded real well to her and things just went from one plateau to a whole new dimension and we still haven't even reached the surface of what till death do us part is uh getting ready to become uh yes, so to be honest it actually was an accident it started out it started out as a show that me and my friend was doing we did one episode me and my friend did and then by the second episode god had started opening up so much doors for him that he couldn't make it to the second episode. So my wife filled in. When my wife filled in, it did so well until I went and prayed and God said, this is it. You know what I mean? So uh, we switched the title of the show. 
to Till Death Do Us Part. We changed the direction okay. and the overall message and the rest is history. Wow. Um, I, I love it. I love it. I just want to kind of start off there. I think it's an amazing thing. You know, when God allowed me to put this, to bring this apart. Um, um, you guys were one of the first names that came up um, right. to be able to connect with people that's already doing the work. Right. Um, so, I, I mean, I bless God for it. I'm, I'm very exciting. Amen. Um, whenever um, I'm able to get on, to, I can be able to sit back and learn. Amen. I, I'm not one to like to come on and try to tell somebody something, but I like to come on and learn. Amen. So I thank God. Amen. For you all. <clears throat> okay. All right. So what we want to do is, <laughs> all right, everybody on the live, us, everybody, we want everybody to just relax. We want everybody to relax tonight. So we're going to do a little exercise tonight before we get started because we're just going to have fun tonight. All we're doing is having fun. That's it. Okay. Let's do, let's we're going do it. To let's God. Do it. So everybody breathe in. Come on, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, <laughs> breathe out. And the reason why I want to do this, because I really want to have a real conversation um, that we can just speak from experiences um, on the questions that we're going to talk about on tonight. Um, and however y'all want to do it, have a, whichever one want to start off and say something about it or whatever. Um, I'm going to try to, we're going to try to get about six segments in, um, in the hour that we're going to try to hang in tonight. Um, so um, the first thing I want to say, and we're going to ask um, the Blandes to kick this off for us. We're going to, we're going to give them um, the score, and we're going to let them kick this off tonight. And the first question is, why get married? Talk to us. Say that again. And say that question again. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, give me that okay. question one more okay. time. OK. Um, the first question is, why get married? Why get married? OK. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I heard you. I heard you. You want to go over? Yeah. I'll take a stand. OK, OK, OK. Go ahead. OK, why get married? I, I, yes, ma'am. Um, can you hear me OK? Yes, ma'am. You good. Yes, ma'am. OK. So why get married? Um, for me personally, um, being a, a little girl growing up, I've always aspired to be married. I've always aspired to be a mother. You know, those were the two things that I, I really uh, wanted to do in life. And so um, that was essential for okay. me, from, you know, watching my parents. Um, I, I, I grew up in a home where I didn't have a father. In the um, so to me, marriage was very important, a very important um, value that I wanted to, to have. Um, so getting getting married i believe is one of the most sacred unions that two people can have to express their love to, towards one another freely um and under the covenant that god has established and so um the reason i believe two should get married is so that everything that you are in life or you aspire to be in life you have one person that you are committed to that you're able to share all of that with so that's, that's my take on it. Amen. <laughs> All right. Um, so you want to enlighten on that? Yeah, let me add. I got married because she wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would I would say um, when when I got married um uh, her, uh, it was it was far less than what I know now. Um, so now I would say having gone through so much i would say why i get married is because uh if you love someone enough and you love them to the point to where you actually want to become one with them that literally yes, can take place when you commit your relationship to god so wow. marriage is two people coming together committing their relationship to god if you don't commit okay. your relationship to god then you do not have a marriage and if you don't commit wow. your relationship to god then the two of you cannot become one because God yes, is the only person that can perform a spiritual surgery. These doctors may can perform physical surgeries and they can detach, you know, uh, Siamese twins or whatever, but no doctor can join two people together um, and they still live. So uh, God is the only person that can, can, cre can create such a surgery. 
So uh, when two people join together physically, God does a spiritual uh, a spiritual surgery that joins them together as one. And that's why I say get married. And also, um, you know, I'm a firm believer uh, that, you know, when God created man, that man did not see a lot of things that he had on the inside of him. So God put man to sleep and he created the first surgery in which he took woman outside of man and he showed man what he had down inside of him all along, which was that woman. So when you meet the right woman, that woman uh, is designed to show you qualities that you had inside of yourself that you could not see. So um, for me, I would say that's why you get married. You get married because you found that woman that the good qualities and the things that you have in yourself that you didn't even recognize or realize that you had in yourself, that woman will pull those things out. And I'm, I will uh, not be doing myself justice if I said that everything, every good part of me, every great aspect of me, anything that I'm successful in is owed to my wife because it was her who pulled out things inside of me that even I couldn't see myself. And check this, what a lot of people don't believe uh, either, she pulled out things inside of me that even God couldn't. Let that sit wow. in your spirit. Wow. Now, and, and the reason why I say that, Pastor, let me give you some scripture. In Genesis, okay. uh, it doesn't record where Adam ever stated that uh, he needed any help. It doesn't record where Adam ever stated that he was lonely. But God saw that Adam was going through something. Now, God could have, wow. if he wanted to, he could have provided uh, or he could have done whatever whatever void was being in Adam's life he could have done it himself but there's a reason he didn't do it yes, so that's why I say when you get you a woman God intended for that woman to put those things that, that was already inside you he took it out of you and created it in the form of a woman so when that woman reunites yes, with sir. that person she's designed to pull out all of those great things so in other words she's kind of acting on God's behalf Wow. Amen. 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 Makes sense. <laughs> Amen. All right, my wife. Come on, talk to me. Talk hey, to lady. Her. <laughs> she over there being so quiet. <laughs> she nervous, y'all. It's our first live with me. Really? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she She's been on live before, but not, not me and her together. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Well, let's go. I, for me, I believe you have to know what God is saying for your life and for mm -hmm. that dispensation. Because see, a lot of people just want to just marry anybody. Yeah. But mm -hmm. like she said, she was the one to pull out of him what God needed to come out. You know, if you go marry the wrong person, they may pull some stuff out of you, but it may not be the stuff that God needs to work. With. That's right. So That's I true. believe that you have to be in, in tune with God and what God is saying for your life. Sometimes we feel like we're ready when God is saying you're not ready for that. Because the first thing you got to ask, we ask why get married, but you got to know what marriage is. And That's like right. what he said, marriage is the institution ordained by God where two people becomes one. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so when you can't become one with just anybody. You know right. what I'm saying? You may go to bed and you may do all of these other things, but in the spiritual realm, did God join you together? Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You sure. preaching, Lady okay. Fullmore. You preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Benediction. Let's Amen. go home. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, God. Excuse me. Amen. Um for me, for me, I would say um, the spiritual aspect of it, you know, kind of touching on what y'all said, but I just want to say a little bit more. Um, man, when you got two people that's ordained by God, man, you can do damage in the kingdom of God. Yes. You know, I mean, the one that, you know, the one that God has given you, the, the love that you have for one another, um, you know, but, but even, I, I, I say spiritual because He's commanded us as men to love our wives as Christ loved the church. That's deep. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. Huh? 
it's, it's deep. It really is. It really, really, really is. You know, I mean, I, I heard a, um, a pastor friend of mine was on the live, my live, my, um, my testimony show that I do um, um, on Sunday night. He was talking about how his wife loved him through all his flaws. And I mean, she really, really loved him. She was just right there with him mm -hmm. their entire time. It made him a better man due to the love that she showed him. And, and, and that's how we ought to be when it comes down to, um, you know, just being together. It should be, you know, for no other reason, but that should, you know, that should be the main reason, you know? Um, right. Just, just I would say spiritualness, you know, more than anything. I mean, not some natural things too, but more spiritual. Um, as far as, what, you know, from what I can see, you know, on, 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 on you know, what I believe in, but especially now, back then I probably didn't believe in that, but, but now I do, you know, so, yeah. Right, right. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and this is it's a beautiful. Over, I wanna... Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm just saying it's a beautiful thing. You can, we can move on. We, oh, we can no, be there no, for um, Let's skip over. Because I want to, what I want to do is I want to build a foundation. Um, let's talk about, um, real quickly, let's talk about what you saw as a child. Um, I don't know if you, you, got, both of you guys grew up in two parent homes. But I, I want to ask two questions. The first question I want to ask is, um, what did you see as a child? Did you, did you grow up in a two-parent home? And if you did, will that affect you to maybe becoming married in, in the future? Well, let me just go on the track of this. When I grew, I grew up in a two-parent and what I saw is okay. the, the traditional sense of marriage. You know, I ain't go to work and, you know, the woman stay home okay. and take care of the kids or whatever the case may be. Um, I literally, and this, I literally watched my father home, hand my mother his check, and go upstairs, like all the time. We knew when my dad got paid because we would be standing to the door waiting on him to come walk down the block. Because when he gave mommy the check, mommy took us to the toy store. Those of you, I don't want to tell my age, but we went to Toys R Us and we got us a toy every month, you know what I mean? Um, or every other week or whatever. Okay. You know, so I watched, I, I thought that as a husband, that's what you were supposed to do. Um, okay. I watched my dad, you know, do everything to try to make my mother happy. You know what I mean? Um, it, and even in areas of as far as how he raised us, I watched it. There were certain ways that he wanted to raise us, but my mother wasn't with it. So to make her happy, he kind of fell back a little bit on some certain things or whatever. And, um, uh, but when, when we first got married, so that, this was my initial thing. I'm like, you know, I go to work, I come home, I give her my check, and then I just go play video games or whatever the case may be. And I felt like, look, I'm doing my part. You know what I mean? I went to work, I gave you my check, I'm, leave me alone. You know what I mean? So, um, but then I realized that, you know, it took more than just providing to say you're a husband. Like, you know, you have to be there for communication. You have to be there uh, 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 as a teammate. You have to be there to talk to her about her day. You have to be there to talk to her about her problems. And, you know, not saying my dad didn't do all these things, but I didn't see that because growing up, stay out grown folk business. We couldn't sit in the company of, you know, of, of grown people, you know. But um, one thing I do know is, and, and that I can say that I picked up from my dad is that he literally laid down his life for my mother anything she wanted whatever she wanted he made sure she got it um you know wow. uh, whether it be uh materialistic things or whether it be just having her way you know just period around the house and i often joke with my mother now i'll be like i'm not turning into my dad nika ain't gonna run me you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah so that's what i saw growing up and another thing too um I was able to even watch her grow up, you know, cause we kind of grew up together. Wow. In the so um, one thing, like when she and I was, uh, we was best friends for a long time. And um, I used to wow. hear this, I used to hear the stories of how her heart was broken by other guys, you know, never thought in a million Jesus. years that we would be married with four kids together, never. So I was able to, another wow. thing what made me realize and was attracted to her was the way her mom's was with her husband. So I'm looking at Mom Dukes wow. like you looking if I marry her, like I'm gonna get food every day. You know what I mean? Even if she's mad at me, she's still gonna cook for me. Uh, she's gonna keep the house clean. 
she gonna let me do, you know, she, you know, and I'm watching moms, you know what I mean? Uh and yeah. and even from a even from a, a a forgiving standpoint and seeing how her moms even forgave, you know what I mean? Like I would I, I looked at that and I was like, wow, you know, if this is what I got to look forward to in the future, it's gonna be great. And to be honest, I was right. You know what I mean? I was really right. You know, a lot of the qualities that moms have, she also has. You know what I mean? She be slacking on the cooking part sometimes. She don't be want to cook for me every day. But that's all right. We working through it. That's probably a good thing because I was getting fat around here lately. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, you want to You want to enlighten? Come on. Speak on that. My father died and I was five years old. So I grew up in the same My mother was in It was just her. Um, not only did she raise her children, but she raised children that she had coming into the family, as well as my father's children. So mm. children that he brought into the marriage. Yeah. Um, so it was a lie. And so I went to my mom do the miraculous. I, I watched her. We never went a day without uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a full course of meal. We had breakfast. We had dinner. We had we had supper at night. You know, my mom did the, 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 if we were poor, I didn't know what poor was. Because yeah. We always had clothes. We always had, my mom was gone alone. And therefore, when my mother was there, um, my older sister stepped in. My mother's oldest daughter stepped in. And she was like mom, but she wasn't mother. Um, mm -hmm. During the summertime, we saw my mom all day, every day. But it was during the school season where whenever she came home, my, my mother was She wasn't there, but we got home from school. Um, the pot was hot on the stove, you know. We, I just watched my mom. The hardest thing was her making preparation. And even as um, my father's children, as they grew older and, and moved on with their life, they moved up north. It was still us. My mother had to let her children on her yeah. own. So even though they were gone, my mom still had all the blood. Mm -hmm. And she still just. She was gone a lot because she was always on the move trying to make it happen. Yeah. Um, but I didn't I didn't see no struggle. I didn't hear no crying at night. You know, mm -hmm. I just knew that she wasn't she was gone a lot. Okay. Amen. And, I want and, and if y'all want to tag team with what I was doing with, with, with one of y'all saying something, then one of us saying something so we can keep it moving, that's fine. Mm -hmm. if, but if something that y'all want to say you want to end with or something, mm -hmm. that's fine too. Because we just want God to just flow, man. We just want to have fun tonight. I wanted um, to ask. Come on, we're going to move on. I'm not even going to ask that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on. Okay, so what we want to do tonight, I want to ask a single question, then I want to ask a married question. Let's switch over to a single question. I want y'all to go back to when y'all were single. And this is the next question today, tonight. And one of y'all to answer it. I'll come back and answer it. Um, this question is it says, this, this is a single question. It says, How did you know when he or she is for me? Is the one. Talk to us. So I, I would um, like to answer and pass a little more. So I think um, when you see, when you can see a person um, that has become a part of your life, and you feel that they can uh, help you fulfill your purpose in life. Or if you feel like for me, it's like I, I felt like um, what I what I long for in a husband or a soulmate or you know a, a, a father of my children, I saw in David. And so when you can see a person's potential past where they currently are in life, and you see um, that match, you know that is parallel to you, then I think that's a person that you should pursue for marriage. If if I see myself, wow. let's just say 15, 20 years from now. Um, 
being a, a doctor, you know, a doctor um, at a, a school or a school or a principal or something at school. And, and if I see this, this guy, you know, is, is going in the same direction, has the same aspirations in life, he has the same goals, he has the same perspective, um, and also has the quality of what I'm looking for in a, a mate, um, and we have that attraction and same spirit, I think that that's the one that you could pursue. Um, and also for me, I felt like I couldn't um, live without him. Like if you feel like a person, you know, you can't, your life, he just compliments you. You can't be without him. You always want to be, you know, and not so much from a lustful place where it's just uh, so, so emotional driven, but it's purposeful driven. Okay. You know? okay. So the single standpoint, I think looking for those qualities that match where you want to be in life. Yeah. Good stuff. Amen. Mm -hmm. Um, I got somebody. I got somebody. Um, inboxing me. Let them know that said that it's there's some static. Whenever we got, whenever we talk. Okay. What she's saying. Okay. I don't know why. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, um, anybody out there, just comment if you can hear us. Okay. Can y'all hear us? Yes. Thumbs okay. up. Can. Thumbs up. Thumbs yeah, somebody, up. somebody say something on the live tonight. Let us know. Thumbs up. Thank you, you Sister Brown, for letting us know. Does it just come in kind of? Somebody said sounds clear. Y'all read that? Yeah, somebody said sounds clear. Okay, so we good? Yeah, we good. Okay, okay. Now, what was the question? Come on, we gonna move on. Oh. Um, the question was, how do you know if he or she is for me? Um, mine is real simple. I uh, okay. I wrote a, no, no, for real. I wrote a song. I wrote a song that I sung to her when she was coming down the aisle, and the wow. song the song was entitled "I'm Not Sure." And in the song, I was talking about, and this is my answer. I was talking about I'm not sure about a lot of things. I'm not sure um if we're gonna argue sometime. I'm not sure um if. The sky is gonna always be blue. I'm not sure what kind of car we're gonna drive. I'm not sure what kind of house we're gonna live in. I'm not sure how many kids we're gonna have. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna live, food I'm gonna eat, all of this stuff. And then at the end, I'm like, but the one thing that I am sure of, the very one thing, and to this day, this still remains true. I'm so sure that I cannot live my life without her. And that's when I knew that wow. she was Wow. When she became the, wow. the sure thing in my life. Amen. Amen. Um, for me, I would say I look for signs. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a size ones and miracle type of guy. So I look for things that um that let's say for instance that we may have in common. Not we're not gonna have everything in common, but some things that we have in common. That I know that if I say, well, I want to go to church five days a week. You won't, you won't come back and say, well, nah, that ain't for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I just look at things that we kind of have in common that I know that when we say that God has put us together, that we know that, um, in other words, it won't get old. You know, sometimes people, people get married for the wrong reasons. We're going to talk about that, too. And then um, you say, come on, baby, come on, go to church with me. And, and, and your husband, your wife is like, nah. I stay home and watch the game, you know. I don't want to go to no church, you know. So it's it's just I'm 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 just I'm just using for an example. Mm -hmm. You know, I look for just things that we have in common that I know that um will keep us together, you know, that our relationship won't get boring or um mm -hmm. help me holy ghost. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Kind of kind of somewhat on that level. Um I'm, so I'm trying to fresh. pull out what I want to do tonight. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. No, I said I, I get it. You want to make sure that it's constantly being fresh. In other words, uh, yeah, yes, yes. You don't want to have a boring marriage, marriage, you know. More like a river versus a lake. You know what I mean? Constantly, yes, flowing, constantly yes. new horizons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Sir. I want to. I, I just. I just love to. I love when I see older people. Yeah. And people don't believe in this, but I, I'm, I'm. I really believe in love. I, I have. And no mm -hmm. buts about it. People say, you know, once you get older, you know, you can't stand one another. But that's mm -hmm. not always the case in every relationship because yeah. you find people that's 50 and 60 years in marriage, and I, we, we put up the both, 
um, this week, these people are still in love. You know, they, 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 they I want to talk to them. They're like, yes, we're still in love, you know? Yeah. And that's what I believe in. I, I really believe I really believe in love. I have no, no ands and buts about it, you right. know? So, you know, that's kind of what I, what I want. You know, I want that, I want that real love. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. 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 I, I, uh, love, I talked about love on, uh, on last week at uh, the wellness center. Okay. Um, we talked about how, you know, love, I used to think it was an emotion, but it's more like an element, you know, because, um, when okay. you really love somebody, there's nothing you can do to fall out of love. Like that real love is like everlasting. And, you know, if you have any emotional problems, you can take a drug to alter your emotions. But if you in love with somebody, it don't matter how much drugs you take, that love ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? And um, and, this, sir. And, and confession, to be honest, you know, even though I knew that she was the one because I couldn't live my life without her, I would, I would confess and say that when we got married, I don't believe I loved her the way I should have loved somebody that I got married to. You know what I mean? And, um, wow. and, 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 I'll, and I'll confess and say, I didn't get married for love. I didn't marry for love. You know what I mean? So, but okay. to this day, I can honestly say beyond a shadow of a doubt, she is the love of my life. And I yes, sir. don't love nobody as much as I love her. Not even myself. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and you know, you know it's, it's so funny you said that. I'm aiming to cross you. It's so funny you said that because I heard this one person say that you shouldn't marry for love. That's what, that's what they said. You know, um, mm. he talks about how marriage, he say how love, love will come. You know, um, he just kind of brought forth some other corners um, on different reasons why, you know, we get married. And we'll talk about that if we get the time. I know we, time is winding up. We're not going to be able to be on as long as I want to. But, um, mm. you know, just he was just saying that, you know, you, should, you, you don't have to marry for that. If it's there, it will come. Uh, but one thing I, I love about what y'all said, I want to touch on this. I love it how you guys were friends first. I think that's mm. a beautiful thing. Um, to start yeah. with friends. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. foundation. To be yeah. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, we talked about why I get married. Now, let's talk about why I stay married. Why should I stay married Ooh. if he ain't doing right? Talk to me. Mm. You can talk to me first. I'll take the Look. first stab on that one. Look, I'm going to do the first thing on no, that. No, no, sit down. <laughs> this is my price. This is right. This is your toes a little bit, right? <laughs> so, Listen. Yeah. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. Go ahead. So, stay married. So, David and I have been married. This is our 17th year, right? Going into our 17th anniversary. And wow. there's different times where I wanted out of this marriage, right? And I'm talking talk in the beginning, out. In the middle, I want it out. Not recently, I didn't want out. <laughs> but the beginning and the middle stages. It's so, all right. Teach us. It's all right, teach us. <laughs> just, um, you know, like I, I, I had to um, get my emotions in check, right? And I had to understand that feelings change all the time, right? But the truth remains the same. Facts remain the same. And the truth... And the facts were that I was um, still in awe of this guy. He still did things that um, that made him suitable for me, or suitable for our family. It's just sometimes I felt trapped in my emotions, and I just wanted out because I was angry at the time. I was mad at some of the decisions that he made or some of the ways that I couldn't get, and I couldn't understand why he couldn't see things my way. You know, and so being a woman that is... Um, very independent and you know always feeling like um i'm right so to speak you know and i feel like um a lot, of, no, not, sometimes. <laughs> a lot of times um david will hold down or you know he'll be steadfast on something and i just want him to see it my way and if, if i don't if he doesn't see it my way then automatically i think about all the wrong things that he's done you know and that just makes me make impulsive decisions but through uh the years yes, i've learned that that's uh, that's not the way to go, you know. And I've learned to look past where we are currently to see where we will be. And the only way that we're gonna get where we will be or where we shall be is if we continue on the road that we started out on, you know. And um, and it's gonna be okay. So so stay hanging in there wow. because you see tomorrow, even though you're living in today. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I love it. You want me to answer that? Oh, no, you don't have to. She can come oh, no, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to now. If you want to say something, that's up to you. I, I want her to speak because we ain't hearing from her. And when she spoke the first time, it blessed me. Okay. So, I want you to speak up a little bit because somebody in the comments said they couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. Me? Me? No, no, uh, ladies. Okay. Oh, yeah, speak a little. Speak a little. That's all. I'm, um, I'm a little different in my answer because I've been through some things. And um, I'm the kind of person where I want to know what God says. Yeah. Because I know that God is not going to be wrong. If mm -hmm. God said you the one for me, then guess what? You the one. And mm -hmm. every day ain't going to be rosy. Every day ain't going to be sunny. You, it going to rain sometimes. It, it may even start snowing. Yeah. You know, that's life. You know, but you got to know how to put on your snow boots. Yeah. And that's you true. will let God teach you how to that's, be married. That's true. You know, because you don't have to forgive. And if you don't know how to forgive, God know how to teach you yeah. how yeah. to be forgiven. That's you know, right. If you don't know how to love people, God knows how to teach you how to love. Yeah. Right. So your question was, why stay married? Why stay married? What did God say? Because mm -hmm. it may you may be going through a rough dispensation. It may be bad. But mm -hmm. later on down the road, as um Lady Brandon said, mm -hmm. it's not gonna always be like that. Yeah. You know, right. right now God is just teaching you something because that's, that's God. He's ever teaching. Yes. That's right. But if you know that this is what God has said. Mm -hmm. if, if God say, I ain't saying you say. Right, right, if right. If God say, that's right. it's gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's that's true. Well, why I why I stayed married is because I didn't want to be on child support. Like, <laughs> you know what? I'm going straight to the courthouse. No, I'm just kidding. Four kids. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> not two. Not three. Four. Nah, I passed. You had, you had four of them too. <laughs> but no, um, seriously, oh uh, I stayed because leaving was never in my vocabulary. When I married her, I already knew yeah. out of the high water, we staying together. If you leave, I'm gonna chase you. And if you don't come back, wow. then that's on you. But I I uh, ain't no leaving. Ain't no leaving. Wow. Forever don't come easy. And I think that what a lot of us has done. Uh, a lot of couples before us gave the preconceived notion that forever comes easy. You're actually sharing a life with a person. There are going to be some disagreements. There are going to be some fallouts. There are going to be even yes, some breakups but to make ups. You know what I mean? But it's never no separation or yes, disconnect marriage. You know what I mean? Like, you know, our house is big enough to where if you need some time, you can go and get yourself together and pray to God like Lady Fulmore said, and then we can come back and we can yes, attack sir. the problem, you know, from a spiritual standpoint. But breaking up, mm -mm, ain't no more. Look, I got her name tattooed on my finger. And I, you know, sometimes I wear a ring, sometimes I don't. But I got her name tattooed on my finger because if she ever leave me, ain't nobody else coming here. Ain't nobody else getting right there. You know what I mean? That's it. I mean, done. We, you know, I, I uh, uh, yes, sir. No more wives for me. Just ministry. Yep. Just ministry, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That's it. Just ministry. Yeah, okay. Just ministry and yeah. side chicks. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. Well, we gonna move on. I think I'm. Yeah. I think I'm. I think I'm already thirty minutes. I'm thirty minutes over, y'all. So come on, we, have, we got. Go ahead. Go I, ahead. I asked Pastor if you don't mind going for another 40 minutes. Okay, um, let's move on. We're gonna ask another singer's question. And the singer's question is, do I seek God for my mates? Um, and the second one is, what is love What is love in your mate? Do I seek God for my mate? I would say yes. Most do, I, do I seek God for my mate? Most definitely. Okay. And what was the second part? Um, what is, what is love? What is love in your mate? In other words, what should I be looking for in a mate? Oh, okay. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really seek God for her. God told me. Okay. He was the one. And it's strange because, okay. uh, 
I shied away from her and went in an area that looked like it was for me, as far as another woman that looked like she fitted what I what I needed the look to be, you know. And um, uh, when it didn't work, it was a no brainer. Like God was like, you know, it's kind of like I was choosing. I was being judgmental with her because on the outward, she didn't fit in my mind what I needed. You know what I mean? So God told me, now go and get the one that you were supposed to get all the time. And don't you ever try to judge somebody like you got it going on yourself. Like you ain't got some skeletons in your closet and like your uh, laundry ain't dirty and, you know, stuff like that or whatever. So I, I, one of the things that I also love about my marriage is it's teaching me how God loves me. And uh, what I look for, what I look for, um, what I what what attracted me to her was I was going through an ugly breakup in a previous relationship, and like I said, me and her was best friends, like like this. And um, she invited me. I was going through a big state of depression. Uh, she invited me to a church service. I really did not want to go. While I'm at the, and mind you, I'm still I still have a gift. I still can discern through going through all of this, going through depression, but still gifted. That's, that's, that's a word right there. And um, so I went to that's church, right. I went to church and I'm sitting at the altar and I felt somebody grieving like hard, hard down, literally grieving and crying out to God. I mean, like, like they world was in there, right? And I was like, oh God, who is this person grieving like this? So I looked up to see, you know, who it was and it was actually her. And the grief that she was feeling wasn't grief because of the issues that she had in her life. She was grieving that bad because of the problems that I was going through. And she was grieving more than I was about my problems. And I said, that's who I need in my life. I need someone that's going to God and going after God and praying on my behalf for God even more so than I am. Wow. And that's what attracted me to her. Wow. From that day, I said, she got to be wow. my wife. She didn't even know it. But wow. that day, I said, she got to be my wife. Wow. Jesus. Uh, hmm. And I told her mother, I told her mother, and then two weeks later, her mother set the wedding up and the rest is history. <laughs> Wow. Wow. So, how, so how long how long did y'all so y'all never dated y'all just immediately just got married yeah like it, <laughs> I, that's the thing i don't even know where to relate where the friendship ended and the relationship started it it just merged wow. like it, it just transitioned yeah like it just transitioned from friendship to, to a, a marriage friend. you know what i mean i'm trying to be deep yeah but but yeah um it just merged it just like we literally sometimes we look did make it official though at one point. I mean, I guess yeah. it was official when we kissed. Yes, you know what I mean. The first time now she put me in the friend zone. No, I gotta tell this. I gotta tell this. The first time she put me in the friend zone, Pastor Fullmore. She put me in the friend zone. Come on, sir. I, I came to her and I said, "Hey, listen, I was getting ready to go, uh, go back to Brooklyn, so I needed to know am I going back to Brooklyn to stay or am I coming? Am I coming back?" So, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to tell her how I feel. So I didn't really tell her how I feel. I just asked her, who am I to her? How does she see me? You know what I mean? And she literally was like, you my best friend. You my brother. You know, all of that talk like that. I said, all right, cool. And I left. So long story short, came back again. I tried to kiss her and she turned her head away from me. And I was like, oh, wow. So, you know, but wow. persistence, persistence. And um, that's when I, I think it started when I kissed her. Because I don't ever remember being like, will you be my girlfriend? Or nothing like that. I don't remember none of that. Yeah, so those are things you should look for. <laughs> and you're me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Come on, Lady Fulmer, talk to us. <clears throat> so you seek God for the mate. I don't, I don't feel like, and I guess because I made mistakes from time past, and I didn't ask God. And I just feel like if I would have asked God, He said, "Take all your weight and I'll direct you." God don't tell me yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I, ain't, I ain't go, I can't go with. I can't afford to go without God because there's so much comes along with. It's already you don't know what you're gonna what's 
what's in the pot anyway. You yeah. already don't know what's in the pot, but then when you're outside of the will of God in the pot, you mm -hmm. definitely don't know what's in And that's not a place where nobody should be. Yeah. Right, right. Amen. Amen. Um, for me, I would say yes. Um, I would say yes because, well, everybody's situation is not the same, but when you have a lot of females chasing you mm -hmm. for the wrong reasons, Mm -hmm. You don't want to get married to the wrong person, you know? Right, sure. that's right. Because um, everybody, you know what I'm saying? You know, people, mamas, yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people, mothers, they they can see, sometimes they can see you going somewhere and they don't want to connect you with their daughter, you know, because they see you trying right. to do something good. Yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, I'm going you know, to look you up with my daughter, you know? Uh -huh. And it, it's, not always, it's not always the case, not always God. Yeah. You know, sometimes they just want you to, Marry their daughter. Yeah. And then the thing about it is, even with that, I've seen so many situations like that go, go go bad to where one minute, you know, you want me to be with your daughter, and the next minute, um, you ready to throw me in jail, throw me on child support, you know. Right. So it, it just things like that. I just feel like a lot of things we probably can avoid um yeah. whenever we do see God. Now right. sometimes we don't, and I, and I mean, um, you know, I mean, I, I know a lot of situations where people didn't, and I mean, they, they're together. I'm not, I'm, I'm not knocking that. Yeah. What I am saying is, is that in some situations you want to, I, I, and I say that, I, you know, I do Uber for a living, and I meet some guys, that's some horrible, horrible stories. I'm not gonna get into it, but mm -hmm. um, just really sad in the day on the things that some guy. I'm talking about a lot of men that talk to me, and what they're going through with their previous wife, or, you know, previous girlfriend. It's kind yeah. Of sad, yeah. You know? Yeah. And everything like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I want right, to. Come on. We're gonna move to the next question. Go ahead. Chime in on that real quick. You know. Um, Go ahead, uh, sir. I'm sorry. It's it's different strokes for different folks, but one thing I would say is that as a man, if a woman is presented before you, and you can't see yourself in that woman, nine times out of ten, she's yes, not. Sir. You know. Um, yes, Adam, sir. Adam, was Adam was sleep. Adam was sleep when God started performing the surgery and he took woman out of him and he brought woman back to him. According to scripture, he brought woman back to him. He never told Adam who that woman was at all. All he did was presented her to him. And Adam was the one that spoke up and said, this is flesh of my flesh. This is bone of my bone. I'm gonna call her woman because she came from me. God didn't tell him that. He looked at that woman and saw something in her. He saw himself in her. So he was able to say, wow, I see myself in you. I see myself in you. I'm going to call you woman. I'm going to call you something that came from me. And that's what happened with me and her. And that's how it should be with anybody who's getting getting ready to get married. You have to see yourself in that person. And this goes for women too. If a guy has, if you look at a guy that you want to be with and you can't see yourself in that person, something is seriously wrong if you think you're going to attach yourself to him because we work because the vision that i have for my life she finds her vision in that in fact she finds it. supporting me for my vision in her vision you see what i'm saying wow. and that's why we work yes, so sir. let's say for instance if i want to be a, a ice cream salesman she want to make ice cream cones you know what I mean? So you got to find a person okay. that you see yourself in. And that person should see themselves in you. That way, when y'all start excelling together, it's no, because you will be surprised how many husbands be jealous of their wife's success. And you will be surprised how many wives are jealous of their husband's success. But if y'all see y'all vision and pushing each other's vision, it, it, it can't help but work. Wow. Man. Amen. So true. So true. Yes, sir. All right. Next question says, um, this is going to be for singles. This question is for singles and married people, but can we break it up single versus marriage? It's going to be kind of tough, but I think we can handle it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What happens when he or she cheats? Do I stay or do I go? Talk to me from a marriage perspective. Talk to me from a singer's perspective. 
talk to me. From a married a married perspective, uh, me person, and I'm 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 gonna speak from experience. Uh, I would okay. say, stay. I would say stay. From a married perspective, okay. And the reason why I would okay. say stay is because forever is a long time, and oftentimes I hear a lot of women say, you know, marriage isn't based on sex. You know what I mean? Or yeah, my marriage. relationship isn't based on sex. Well, if it's not based on sex, then why would you throw it all away because of sex? You know what I mean? Uh, oh. But, and again, this is not a law that I'm giving to nobody. This is not a law I'm giving to nobody or nothing. I'm just telling you, for me, when I said forever, I yes, meant sir. forever. Yes, and I meant despite mistakes, despite mess ups, despite bad decisions and all of that stuff, I yes, meant sir. forever. Now, boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, it's a different story. Like, I. I don't recall me ever staying with a girl from a girlfriend standpoint that cheated on me. I might have entangled with her again and probably laid in the bed with her again. But as far as her being my girlfriend, no. You know what I mean? But now from a marriage standpoint, like I said, there is literally nothing that this woman can do that would make me leave her. Even if she tried to kill me, I still would try to find some type of way to justify it and try to make it work. You know what I mean? So and wow. that's just my truth. So I stay because, again, I can't see me living without her. I don't. I don't want to see what that looks like. Wow. Do you want to get it on? I love it. <laughs> Why are you, you saying about that? Oh. <laughs> it's funny you have um, that question for tonight because that was actually a topic on one of our um, one of our shows to that was part that we discussed. Okay. Wow. Individuals, you know. If should he cheated, he or she cheated, should I leave or should I stay? Um, and so I will have to agree um, with David to a certain extent because I believe it's all on the individual um, what they can tolerate, um, yeah. what they're willing to. You said if you marry, stay. That's what you said. No, I, no, I said that was my truth that I would, but I, it's not all. Everybody don't have to stay. No. <sighs> anyway, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So. I, 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 Say, I believe it's an individual standard, an individual standard that you have in place. If that's something that that um is going to cause you to hold unforgiveness and malice in your heart and in your spirit, it's going to cause you to be bitter towards a person, you know. But you're just staying because um it's technically the right thing to do. Then I believe you will be do more damnation by staying in the relationship if it's causing you to defeat yourself as an individual and and, right. and, and, and hindering your growth, you know, as a spiritual being, so to speak. So in marriage, um, I would say try to work it out first. See if, if you can, you know, get okay. a level playing field on it. See, you know, if we can work this thing out and, and move forward. You know, um, okay. from a simple perspective, I would say um, give them advice. It's all about where you are in life, what you're willing to accept. And things are a little bit different when you're single because you haven't taken that union to God and you haven't, you know, took taken those things, um, you know, sacrificing yourself so to speak and, and, and compromising in such a way as you would if you were married yeah that's good so, amen. amen that's good <laughs> amen good job thank come on, you come on lady i'm gonna need a deliverance <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't say she is out if you ever if you ever she is out <laughs> i'm gonna need a deliverance <laughs> And she gonna beat you up before. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. On both ends. Oh, if we ain't married, I'm gone. You know, rub me, but if I'm married, <laughs> I, I look at marriage. Marriage is sacred. Marriage is honorable before the Lord. And when when you enter into a covenant agreement, that says so. And and I know I I know that you know trial and error and I know you live and learn and, and God is teaching you and, and all of these this 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 but I'm gonna need a deliverance. Yeah been there, done that, mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing to go through, especially yeah. when children step into it. Now you right. got another whole entirely different ball game. So yeah. I'm gonna need a deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to there is no I can tell you that. It's I'm going to need surgery. I'm going to need a whole lot of things because. Well, let me just give you my perspective. 
Yeah. Before I got before I got saved and got being no Lord, yeah, I would probably say, uh, listen to me, I would probably say married or not married. This is for the birds. I ain't got time. Yeah. Right. I, right. I, I was I was never a, I was never I'm, I'm being filled up with you. I was never one. You ain't stressing me out. I'm just I'm just being filled up with you. That, that's how I was. Right. Right. When I was in the world, you ain't look here. You right. coming with Trump? Look here. It's too many. I used to always say, I'm gonna be honest with y'all tonight. I would always say it's too many fish in the sea yeah. to be worried about. Right. You know, going through all that. Nah, you go ahead, you go your way, let me go my way. Um, right. to be married and to be saved, um, I would say, I would say I probably would stay, depending on the situation. Let me yeah. just say it that way. Um now. When, when, when y'all said what y'all said, I understand it because y'all talking about love. And when you when you look at it from that perspective, that's a that that that's a whole other ball game. But um, I don't know. I guess I guess depending on your relationship with that with that mate, because yeah. Yeah. everybody that's saved, everybody that's saved, and everybody that's um that's married don't have that relationship. I I I, I see what you guys do. You guys work well together. Um, right. so I don't, I mean, for me, I, I would say probably, I probably would stay, um, but just speaking from another perspective, um, for somebody else, I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of tough, you know? Yeah. I think, I think it'd be yeah. kind of tough, you know? I, I, I mean, add, um, go, go ahead. I just wanted to add, if she falls in love with somebody oh. else and wants to go and be, you, then that's a different story. Story. I ain't gonna be begging like, oh no, let me make you fall back in love with me or nothing like that. But if it's just you know something that happened or due to my negligence, you know what I mean? I wasn't just there. Mistake, okay. Or, yeah, I wasn't okay. there or off doing my own thing. So she's like, you know what? He gonna do his thing. I'm gonna do my thing too. Then <clears throat> I'm forgiving that. You know what I mean? But now she all in love and she ready to leave. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm have to say, okay, well, and I can't fight love and I won't even try. Okay, wow, and that's deep, and I, I respect that. Yes, sir. I, I, I mean, yeah. I truly respect that. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, give me two more questions. I'm gonna give y'all two more. We're gonna go two more questions. Then we we done. Y'all, okay. we gonna have to come back and do a second round of this one day. Yeah. I don't. Um, I don't, don't have to be. Don't have to be Valentine either. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind at all. Okay. Um, I forgot about so much. I really appreciate oh. everything. This, this is really, really. It's this is fun. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I forgot it was Valentine's week. Good, good promotional uh, scheme, Pastor Fullmore. <laughs> That's good. I like that. I like amen, that. Amen. <laughs> oh, man. Amen. Oh, man. All right. Um, let's go back. Okay. My next question. Let's talk. Let's talk this. Um, th this is going back to the marriage couples, and then we'll go back to the singles, and then we'll pray we get out the fly. Um, should we get counseling. Now, I want you to look at it from two different perspectives. Um, when you, when you, whenever you ask the question, look at it from two different ways. Um, look at it from, from your perspective and look at it from somebody else's perspective. But should we get counseling in our marriage? Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we couldn't make it if it wasn't for the counsel okay. that we had from some people, you know. Um, what, okay. What, one huge couple that is very, very, very uh, uh, key into the success of our marriage is um, my brother Raymond Johnson okay. and my sister Sabrina. If it was not for them two, I don't even know where we would be. Um, even my mother and my it. father, wow. if it wasn't for those two, I don't know where we're going to be. My mother and her relationship is kind of funny because, like, my mother want us to stay together. However, my... I'm hard-headed when it comes to my mother telling me stuff or whatever, but she listens to my mother. And my mother counsels her wow. and biased. Like, for example, she wants us to stay together, wow. but if my mother ever knew I was with another woman, she gonna snitch on me. She gonna tell. Um, wow. I, I, can't, I can't go somewhere to somebody else's house and be like, hey, ma, um, if Nika asks you, tell her I'm at your house. Like, that ain't happening, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, <laughs> there have been times where they literally gang up on me 
if my mother look at her and be like, Nico, you know what to do. If he ain't acting right, I'll help you pack your bags. You know what I mean? So <laughs> she gives her unbiased counsel and for what it, for what it's worth, it has made her stay and it has made our marriage better. So a lot of people say you shouldn't put your family in it, you shouldn't this, you shouldn't that. But if you have those people that has been there, done that, and you know they genuinely care and they genuinely love you, um, my brothers even, my brother Daniel, my brother James, like they will give it to me straight. You know what I mean? And they will tell, hey, listen, I, my brother said something to me that blew my mind. Uh, my brother James, he said, uh, he said, um, even even if the grass is greener on the other side. If you mold and water your lawn, it can become just as green. And that was deep. Wow. You know what I mean? So oftentimes we go out there and we want to look for better or we think we find them better. And that's yeah. because we put in our energy into that other aspect. But if you take that same energy and you bring it back home, wow. you can realize that the beauty of your home and what you thought was over there, you can create it right where you are. You know, you should be able to anyway. You know what I mean? So yeah, definitely get counsel. Definitely, <laughs> if you gotta go professionally, that's fine. But I've been well, blessed to be able to know people that's around me that not only love God and not only are in tune yes, spiritually, sir. but they love us enough to tell us the truth. Like my brother Daniel, like he's one of the very few okay. people that I would allow to talk to my wife and I don't need to know what they talked about. I don't need to know what happened at the end of the conversation because I know he gonna give it to her real. He gonna give it to her raw, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, you definitely got to have people Man. around you that want to see y'all win. Hey Amen. And, 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 and what you just now saying, it gave me, God has showed me the, the next question. Come on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. If they're alone, yeah. You don't need to be talking to anybody who went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that makes a difference. Yeah, you don't need to be you need you need to, to be talking to somebody who can hear from God while he's talking to you that he can give you godly or she can give you godly advice. You know, mm -hmm. like he said, somebody that in it to win it for you. You know, right. you, you can't talk to somebody who won't have your wife best interest or your husband mm -hmm. best interest. That ain't gonna work. You That's know, right. especially when they want you to be with somebody else and all of this that you you if they're not connected to God, even if they even if they don't care for the person that you're connected to. Mm -hmm. If they have a relationship with God and they're sincere in what they're doing or their relationship with God, then you know they're gonna tell you the truth. They're gonna give you truth. They're gonna give you what right. God said. Right. So you me all day long and I can out hear you. Okay. But if you if what you're saying to me um ain't lined up with the word of God, I don't want to talk to you. We can get up and go right now. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, real quick, just one minute um, before I answer my question. Should you get, do you guys um, suggest counseling before marriage? Yes. I think, okay. we, I think we bump heads on that. Uh, we, we didn't really have uh, any real counseling before we got married. Uh, okay. I'm not going to say you shouldn't, but I also can't say you should because i got to be okay. honest. When we did try to see a little bit of counsel, it busted up something that we that was very beautiful for us. You know, I don't want to get into details because of people's different beliefs. However, we were in a good place. And even though uh, outwardly it might not have looked right, we were in a good place okay. you know? and then they came along and said well no this is how you should do it and it almost it almost you know with, with god's hand being on it of course it couldn't but at the time we thought it could have busted up our relationship you know what i mean so um i would say that um you know to each his own man like that's one thing you gotta know like to each his own you know like i, I can't say yes yeah, get right. counseled before marriage or no don't get counsel before marriage see once you're in a marriage then you know what you're going to deal with and what you're going to be dealing with and you don't really like foresee things i believe if you get marriage counseling before marriage like a lot of people like to put what they went through on you but you may not ever okay. counsel you about 
You know what I mean? You may That's not true. ever face that. You know? So it's like now, how are you going to prepare me for something that you don't even know that I'm going to walk into? You know what I mean? I got you. But now, yes, if I walk into a problem now that we're in our marriage and things occur, now we know who we can go to because we know who's in tune with what's going on. Uh, they probably got a front row seat or whatever the case may be. Or at the very least, they are spiritually in tune and they spiritually concerned about us and our well-being. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, like I said, to each his own. It's not a, for me, it's not a definite or a must. But okay. if you want to, have at it. If not, whatever. Okay. Um, for me, I would say, I would say, um, I want to I ask the last question first. Um, I would say, now this, this is what I do as a pastor. Um, I believe in, I don't marry nobody without counseling, but I won't stop you from getting married. So what I do is, is that I take couples through counseling and I'm not comparing my life. But I, what I do is, is that I begin to walk them through step by steps and allow them to see, ask them questions. And if they still say, you know what, we can do this, let's make it happen. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm a person to where I'm not going to stop you from doing it. But I want you to know what you're getting yourself into, is what I always say. Um, there's a lot of things that we didn't know. Well, I didn't know. This is my mm -hmm. first marriage. I didn't mm -hmm. know um, getting married to her um, so fast like that. And, you know, a lot of things that I did not realize that would take place because I never really had that foundation of right. marriage. Because my, my, my dad died when I was eight years old. And my mm -hmm. mom remarried. And I didn't really see a good marriage growing up. So I, I, I really can't really adjust to that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've seen other, from other people, you know, with good marriage, somewhat, but not a bunch. I didn't really grow up around a lot of good marriage or whatever. Um, so in that, in that situation or whatever, um, I just want people to just kind of know what they're getting themselves into. Now, right. Right. I tell people, if you, don't want, if you don't want counseling, that's fine. I mean, I ain't got to do with that. But if, if I got to do it, I just want to sit down and I just want to have a conversation with you. I'm not trying to talk all the time. I will never stop you, but I just want you to know things that I didn't know. Yeah. Right. That's why, why I say it's a good thing to do, you know. Right, right. Um, the other thing is, is that when you are married, should you get counseling? I would say yes, but you have to be on one accord. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if the husband <laughs> ain't with it or the wife ain't with it, I ain't wasting my time. I'm looking. Okay, I'm moving right. on. I ain't got time. Right, because right. my thing is, is that if you got one that have a mindset that want to make the marriage work, but the other one don't, you wasting your time. So there, right. there don't need to try to make something work that just ain't, ain't gonna work. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes marriages are just done. I hate to right. say it, but I'm not talking about godly marriages. I don't, I'm not telling you to get a divorce. But what I am saying is that sometimes you just it just ain't meant to be. I mean, sometimes we pick people. We, we get married. We've all made mistakes. I'm not knocking the bite tonight. But what I am saying is, is that sometimes it's just, just ain't, it's just not meant to be. You can't make something be something that, that's not meant to be. You know, right. and my thing is too, is that, you know, if God put y'all together, it's one thing. But when you put yourself together, it's a whole different ballgame. And, right. and, and then, you know, when y'all were talking about children, now you got, when you got children, and it, it does make things tough because you know, if, whenever whenever you leave a two parent home and a one a two parent home comes a one parent home, it kind of makes things kind of rough. You know, um, with the children because now I ain't got daddy in the house, well, I ain't got mommy in the house. So that kind of it, it does something to the children. You know, mm -hmm. um, so you know if we can't make it, let's try to. But we both gotta be at, we gotta be on the same you know one accord. We got it gotta be without it. I just can't see it working, you know? Right, yeah. right. And that's just my perspective of it. Yeah. That's, that's, on that. I want to add one little Yeah, one thing. One thing I wanted to add. Um, this is what counseling, if I'm counseling somebody for marriage, this is what it would sound like. Uh, uh, aside from physical and verbal and mental abuse, is there anything that your spouse can do that would make you leave? And if that answer is yes, you're not ready for marriage. Wow. Okay, I love it. It's just okay. that. Wow. wow. It just, just like y'all say, y'all, the, the name of y'all show until death. Until death, until do, death do a part. 
You know, we're going we gonna all the way in it. And, and I love that. And I love that foundation how y'all are teaching couples to stay together, but either encourage them to be together. Mm -hmm. You know, giving them real conversation. I thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. On that. Um, um, should you get counseling? Okay. Oh, yeah, you already, you already answered. All right, one more. One more, y'all. We going. I'm not. Um, the last one is for, is for singles. And thank y'all so much for your patience and your time. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the last question I had? And David said something that kind of brought me, brought me back to my um, mind and what I what, what the last question I wanted to ask out of the singles section of this thing. Um, what was it? Help me hold me go. Um, I was help me hold me go. If you can leave for any reason, not ready for marriage, sir. You said it was something I said that made you think of something else. Well, it was, it was. When, when, when you said something, God just brought it down to my, my, my mind. I should have wrote it down whenever he said it. Um, hold on for a second. I, I ain't going to It's okay. It's okay. Hey, y'all go and share this. Everybody go share this, please. Yes, please definitely share this. While you um um thinking about that, Pastor Fulmore, I just wanted to add about the the counseling um that you just asked should should couples or marriage get counseling, um premarital counseling and counseling in the marriage. Um, as you were speaking, I was thinking about you know the counseling sometimes can be kind of sort of like a, having an insurance policy on your vehicle. You know, you might not have to use the tools that you receive in counseling, but if you ever get into an accident or if you ever get to a, a stopping point or some type of you know, friction within your marriage, you can pull on that counseling like you yes, would with, with car insurance. You can pull on that and get your vehicle fixed. You know, it may not be um, something that you would need necessarily all the time, but it's available to you and at your disposable yes, should you need to pull on that. So that's why I recommend, yes, seek counseling, seek godly counseling, you know, um, okay. if you you are godly, you can have a godly marriage, you know. That's deep. I you know, that's deep. I, 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 on, on that note, you know, she said, "Godly counseling." You know, it that makes all the difference in the world. Yes, ma'am. You know, somebody that has a relationship with God, mm -hmm. like like um, King Pastor David said. Mm -hmm. um, you may realize, you know what? I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we need to wait. Maybe we're we're not ready for this. Maybe we got the wrong idea. Maybe we just want to be married for the wrong thing, you know. But it, it gives you an idea, you know. It, it helps you to find yourself, and it keeps you from making a mistake, you yeah, know. You know true. what? If, if 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 he if my 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 thing is is a person that on the other side of that table, do they have a relationship with God? Because God may tell them. I'm talking about somebody who can hear from God. Right. You know, that has been with God and said, okay, God, I'm getting ready to counsel these people. They made the decision that they want to join together as husband and wife. I need you to tell me what I need to tell them. Yeah. Because I don't know, but God knows. You know, mm -hmm. he knows if this is the one for you, because everybody can't hear God. Right. Okay. But if you got somebody that, you know what, when God is saying no to a thing, and if that man of God or that woman of God can hear from God, maybe he's going to go in a direction. God is going to lead him in a direction that's going to save you from getting yourself involved in something. Because it don't take nothing to get into. But right. now you got to go through before a judge and you got to go through all of this of what happened. And you got to, to, to relive everything that's already taken place. And um, whatever they mama said, now you got to try to keep... Um, mm -hmm. Hatred and malice and all of this stuff out of your heart. You're trying to stay pure. It just takes so much um, to stay on neutral ground. Then if if this person can hear from God and he's going to give you instruction as God, he's going to lead you. Because mm -hmm. that's what a leader is. They lead people. But if you got somebody that's going to lead you into the direction that God is staying, then maybe they won't even get me. Right. You know what? This is going to go more talk than it's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I'm, 
I'm, I'm going. I'm going to stop you, brother. Time is winding. Um, we're going to ask. Do you guys have any last words? Anything else that y'all want to say? Um. Go. Um. So I just I want to say you know to those couples out there who um are married and those couples who are aspiring to be married you know um just make sure that the person that you're with is someone that like they said earlier that you can see yourself in and that you can see past where they are right now today if you can see past where they are and see their potential and see what they sh what they uh will be then that person may be worth worth the time and it may be worth you having you in their life you know because maybe you can see that potential and you can push that potential and then both of you can um reap the benefits of walking in the same direction you know and fulfilling this thing you know and um you know so i and i, I strongly believe in now i believe in hanging in there once upon a time i didn't i didn't believe that you know um every little thing i would i would say i'm out i have to deal with this nonsense you know but thank god for his grace and mercy that he towards me that now i can uh give that to david you know um because 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 of that because of that love that god that i've experienced um through christ then now i can give that to my so amen i just want to say real quick that my wife is officially a published author and um she has a nice little segment inside of a book entitled together we win together we win wow uh this is a um a, a compiled stories that was compiled by dr annette west uh she's also an author and the name of this book is called marriage connection making it work this is a real good wow. book I'm so proud of my wife i didn't read her work until it was done and when I tell you wow. that it is good, I'm not just saying that. And it's, it has so many topics in here. Um, another topic that we don't like to talk about called Sex Me More. Um, uh, let me find some more. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's all types of good topics in here. And, 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 and it's a real good book for those people who are already married and for those who are aspiring to be married. So um, the book is $20. If you, uh, if you purchase it, before balance. You going out. Pastor, you going out. Okay. Let me just read this. I can watch come back. Come back in there. Amen. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you on today that stayed and come back with us. Amen. We're about to wrap this thing up. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Bringing them back now. All right, man. Okay. There you go. Right. I apologize, my, my <laughs> oldest calling me just now. Uh, okay. But yeah, so guys, um, purchase the book twenty dollars. If you get it before Valentine's Day, uh, you get free shipping and handling. Um, where can they get it? Um, you all can can um, send me your details on my Facebook business page. It's uh, T Blanding Enterprise. Um, my Facebook, like and follow me on my Facebook business page. And there you will find the link to my website, which is T Blanding Enterprise LLC. And um, you can order your book there. Um, if you would like to inbox me and uh, you can cash out the, the, um, the price of the book, which is $20, to uh, dollar sign Tanika Blanding. 
Um, also, um, you can find me on PayPal. So if you want to inbox me um, on my Facebook page or follow, like and follow my Facebook page, you'll see all of the information regarding this book called Marriage Connection. Thank and, you, guys. And we're going to put it in the link. I'm going to put her uh, Facebook uh, business page in the link. Please like it, guys. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, 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 I'll snap with it and stay. Yeah, but that's that. Yeah. That'll, that'll yes, work. Sir. Uh, uh, her sister just put the cash app inside of the comments. So, um, if you want to purchase a book, please. It right now, Pastor. It's it's really good, guys. It's a really good read. And the business page, I think she can put that in there too. The business page. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. that's it. Thank you so much, yeah. Lady Fullmore. It's always a pleasure. Every time I see you, you're just so quiet. But you spoke with a lot of power on tonight, and I'm excited yeah. Yeah. about the things that God is getting ready to do. So, um, yeah, and Pastor Fulmo, you know you're my brother. You know I love you, and you know we'll be Amen. talking. We'll be talking. Amen. Um, before y'all leave, got anything you want to say? Um, as far as Pastor Fulmo, just thank you for being Pastor David and Lady. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Amen. Um, but if there was something that I would have to say to somebody that is considering marriage, um, make sure that you are first um, mm. ready for you sure that this is what you want. And if this is what you want, don't go out and just pick it up. Pick you first the kingdom. And let God order your business. Because God, God won't lead you wrong. And if mm -hmm. you are seeing somebody, ask God what he got to say about the person that you're involved. Right. And, and see what God has to say. And maybe he's not ready. Maybe, maybe that is your spouse, but they're not ready. Yeah. So okay. seek God for let God lead you. You know, the word says in all your ways. That, that's my, my favorite scripture. In all your ways. Acknowledge him and he'll direct it. God will lead you wrong. He loves you, and marriage is honorable, as um, Pastor Blandon said. You know, David didn't even, I mean, um, Adam didn't even know that he needed a mate. He didn't realize that he was actually alone, but God saw right. that he was alone. And God said, You know what? I'm going to put him to sleep. He ain't going to have nothing to do with this. I'm going to give him. What he needs, he needs a help. He needs somebody that's going to help him. So, right. seek him first the kingdom of God. Let God do it. Don't you do it? Been there, and I've done that, and yeah. I've done it myself. And I, right. and I found myself in a place to where I almost didn't come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't take mm -hmm. yourself through something that can't be avoided. That's yeah. right. I didn't need God. I did it on my own. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ask nobody else. I slip off and went do it. But it only took 30 days when I said, what in the world did I get myself into? Yeah. And if it had not been for trying to live a, a life of Christ, and he said, not in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It had not been for the grace of God. And me already knowing how to pray and say, God, get me out of here. Yeah. I probably would not have came from it with my life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Only his grace. Only his goodness. Amen. So I say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And let God order your steps. Because if God says so, he shall be. Amen. 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 We can put our hands together. Amen. And give God praise. Amen. Oh, Amen. God. He's so awesome. He's so great, That's right. That's right. Put those hands together. Put those hands together. That's right. Put them together. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to do this real quick, and I, I'm not trying to hold y'all no longer. Um, can we ask the ladies, um, Pastor? That's okay with you. Um, ask your wife to pray for the marriage, um, couples, real quick, and ask my wife to pray for the singles. Um, and then after that, Amen. I'm gonna actually give out the social media, and then we're gonna go ahead and get out the live, Amen tonight. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, God, for 
this platform tonight, God. We pray, God, that the married couples watching, that will, they will receive some type of inspiration from the things that have been shared tonight, God. We pray that we you can allow our lives to be a testament to the entire world, God, to enhance our marriages and allow our unions to become closer. And we want to be more and more like you in our marriages, God. We want to see you in our marriage, God. Allow us to love on each other like we've never loved before. God, we thank you, God, for creating newness in our marriages, God. We thank you for the new marriages that's going to come forth, God. We thank you for the new unions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Father God, Become God as humble as we know how God, Lord God, ask that you look upon those God that desire a mate, Lord God. God, you made them and you know all about them, oh God. Well, your word declares, God, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all of them, and whatsoever thing that is needed, God, that you were added unto their life, Lord God. So, God, I ask God that you would lead them to you, Lord God. I ask God that you would minister to your people, Lord God, because I don't know what they need, God, but I know, God, that you know what they need. God. And I ask God that you would just bless your people, Lord God, that you would look upon them, God, that you would keep them, that you would strengthen them, Lord God, that you would give those who are dying, God, to be married, God, that just don't know how to wait, God, that don't know how to hold out any longer, God. I just pray, God, that you would give them peace, Lord God, that you would give them the peace, Lord God, that surpasses all understanding, Lord God, that you would help them to hold on, God, that you would minister to them, God, even in their sleep, Lord God, to their dying need, Lord God. I ask God that you would just allow your peace, God, your understanding, Lord God, to rest upon them, Lord God, that you would comfort their hearts and their minds, Lord God, and that you would help them to hold out, Lord God, until you say something different, Lord God. I pray, God, now, God, that you would lead your people to you, God, those that know you, God, through your word, God. Lord God, you seek them out. You bless them, Lord God, as you Marriage is ministry, Lord God. And it's not an institution that should be taken lightly, Lord God. But it's ordained for you, God. Um, and God, I, I just believe, God, that you put people together for a purpose, God. That you don't just put people together to just be putting people together. But God, that there's a plan and there's a purpose for the marriage, God. That they could go forth and minister together, God. According unto your word, God. When you sent your people out, God, you sent them out, God, two by two. For a work, God. So, God, I just pray, God, for those, God, that desire a may, God. You said it's not good that man should be alone, but that you would create a, a helper for them, Lord God. Somebody, God, that's suitable, Lord God. So, God, I just pray now, God, your bless upon your people, God. You know what they do. You made them. You know all about them. I don't know, God, but the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So, God, I just pray now, God, that you would get in the midst, Lord God, that you would lead your people to you, God, those that don't know you, God, that don't know how to come to you, Lord God. God, you know the way, God, how to minister to them, God. You know the way, God, of how to reach them, Lord God. Yes, and sometimes, God, that there's something we just got to go through, Lord God. But, God, I just pray, God, that you do the work, Lord God, and that you will protect your people, Lord God, that you will touch somebody right now, God, that's about to get into a bad marriage, God. That's somebody, God, that's not about to listen to you, Lord God. I pray, God, that you would order their footsteps, Lord God. That you would redirect somebody's footsteps, Lord God. That you would put your shield of protection around somebody, Lord God, to keep them from making a mistake, Lord God. Something, God, that's not going to be beneficial, Lord God, but it's going to take them to a place, God, that where they may not be able to get back from, Lord God. That it may do so much damage to the heart, God. That it may do so much damage to the mind, God. That it may do so much damage, Lord God, to their thinking, Lord God, to their behavior pattern, Lord God. It may cause somebody to be bitter, Lord God. It may cause somebody to not want to, to forgive, God. It may take somebody out of their character, Lord God. So, God, I just pray your blessing, God, upon your people right now, God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for it all, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together. Come on, come on, Facebook. Amen. Amen. Put those hands together. Maybe four more. Amen. King Dick. Amen. Pastor. Pastor. Amen. Um, Bless you. Pastor um, David. Amen. I want you to give them, amen, your church, church address, and give out social media, please, sir. All right. Um, we are over at Living in Truth spiritual wellness center that's in somerton south carolina the address is the number two 
Third Street, Somerton, South Carolina. That's again, Living in Truth Spiritual Wellness Center, AKA Lit, because we on fire over there. Amen. Here is King David Michael Blandon uh, on Facebook. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Give them your um your dates for your shows as well too that you guys oh, be on till, We have we have uh till death do us part. Uh we air on Mondays. Uh we used to do every Monday, but now we do it as you know the spirit leads and uh we um actually will post flyers up. So if you follow me on Facebook, you will see the flyers up and uh you will know it the exact Monday when we do it. Um and also we're taking till death do us part on the road. Um, till death do us part, we'll be doing its first uh, relationships last uh, marriage retreat. It's going to be something that's going to be done annually. Uh, right now, we are uh, we have it in place already. Um, it's going to be in May. Uh, you can also go on um, TB Enterprises and you can find out more details for that. Uh, so yeah, Amen. I'm excited about that as well. Um, anything Amen. else? <laughs> oh, also. You can look at, uh, I have segments that, that I do from time to time as well, where I give like little inspirationals or little insights or what have you. Some of them, one of them is called a backseat driver segment. Um, another one is called, if you can't hang with the big dog, stay on the porch. Uh, yeah, and another yes. one, which I haven't done in a long time, is called a uh, fire pit talk. Oh, and a uh, man cave moment, and man cave moment. So yeah, so yeah, look out for those two. A book is coming soon. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You said book is coming, Pastor? Yeah, book is coming soon. I'll Amen. 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 And I just want to tell y'all once again, Amen. Thank y'all so, so much. Um, you guys from the inspiration tonight. Amen. We're just so, so excited. Amen. For what God is doing for you all. Amen. Um, to our guests, we thank God for each and every one of you for taking out time. Amen. Rather if you know us or you know um, Pastor and his lovely wife, amen, we thank God for you, amen. You can follow us, amen, at Temple Live on Facebook. Our Instagram page, amen, is um, Temple Live 4405, amen, that's Temple Live 4405, and our YouTube page, amen, is Temple Live 05, amen. You can follow us on all those social medias. We'll be back here on Friday night, amen, to continue, amen, this, this, this discussion panel, amen, with Pat, um, with Brother, Christopher Gray and his wife, amen, Barbara Gray, will be with us on this coming Friday night, amen, 7 o'clock, amen. As we continue, amen, these hot topics, past the First Lady, y'all got to come back. Got to come back. Again. We will. We will. I want to say this real quick before Go Barbara. Ahead. Those of you who are not following Pastor Fulmore, please follow him, watch him. He does a lot of prayers and things like that, and I can oh, Yes, sir. Thank you. That or a doubt, I know this man hears from God. I'm telling you. Amen. One day we got to come back and tell him how we met. So I know he Amen. hears. Amen. We got to do that. Yes. Yeah, I was so talking about you to my cousin yesterday about him and his wife getting on the live. Tell him how we met. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, yeah definitely do that. Eddie E. Former on Facebook is, is my, my page. Amen. Or you can follow me. Amen. Tell live broadcast. Yes. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a praying man. I think I've been I've been gifted to pray. So I stick with, I stick with that. Amen. Right, right. Amen. We're going to leave y'all with this song tonight. We bless God. Amen. It says, If you pray, Mama, 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 by my big brother, Amen. Uh, well said, his wife, Nicole. Amen. God bless y'all. We thank God for y'all. Love y'all. Good night. Bless Amen. You. Thank you, Pastor. Love y'all. All right.